Mercedes-Benz W163 parasitic battery drain. Check the pinned comment for the TOM stamps. Shown next is how to use a multimeter at the battery to confirm a parasitic draw. Troubleshooting each circuit to locate the draw starts at about the five minute mark. On this ML, the trouble circuit was found to be the Tele-Aid emergency call circuit. Troubleshooting and repair of the Tele-Aid circuit starts at about the 14 minute mark. This is a 2005 ML500 with the special edition package. It is taken to failing to start uh, with having a dead battery if it hasn't started in a couple of days. So something is draining down the battery. The first thing we're going to do is put a meter in series uh, in the whole car circuit at the battery. If you're already familiar with how to do that, you can go ahead and skip ahead. If you're not, just watch. I'll show all the steps to it. But we want to confirm and see exactly what kind of amperage draw we're getting. Make sure the car is in sleep mode before you do this. So that just means key out of the ignition and just let her set for maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook a multimeter up in amperage mode so we can measure amperage which means we have to be in series and we're going to go in series into the whole car circuit through this negative post on the battery. The first thing you want to do, I'm just going to use this cheapo multimeter from Harbor Freight. These are the ones I used to give away for free. They're like five bucks if you can't get it for free. You usually are going to have your connections hooked up like that. We're going to leave the black one there, but we're going to move this red one up to right here. See how it says 5A, that's 5 amps. So this is maximum five amps says right there and that's the connection we want to go in when we're using when we're measuring amperage so we'll push that in there and i'll go ahead and turn this on and now you just need to connect a, a alligator clip to your to your red lead here like i i have there and i'm just going to put the alligator clip onto this flat part here so I'm just going to go in here, try to get a good connection on that. All right. So I'm on there. And now with the other lead here, I'm going to, how this is going to work is I'm going to hold it right here. And then I'm going to loosen this nut. So I'm just going to loosen this nut here. This is a 10 millimeter. I think that's loose enough. I'm going to make sure I still have a good connection there. That looks good. Okay, now we're here. We have the, let's see, make sure you can see that. We have the meter here on this setting. So turn that so the little dot is pointing to that 5A. And as we lift this up, we'll be able to see what kind of amperage is on there. Here we go. There you can see. So you see I have, I have this lifted up. So this is not touching that, but it's still, the circuit's still closed because this meter is in series. And we're getting too high of a current draw because this car is in sleep mode. It's been sitting here for a while. And yet it's still pulling down 330 milliamps. We want to see this number 50 milliamps or lower. So that would be 0 0.05. So I'm going to go ahead and push this back down and tighten up this terminal and we'll have to proceed to see if we can not find out where this current is being drawn. 
So we definitely have a parasitic drain. Usually what you'd want to do on most cars next is to just verify that you don't have a diode or multiple diodes out in the alternator. I'm going to skip that for now in the ML just because it's a little bit difficult to get down in here. We'll check the fuse box first. To get in the fuse box here, there are these little clips. There should be one here. It's broken on this one, but you just want to pull it back like that and then pull the other one back. And then this just rocks, rocks out. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of fuses and relays in there. What we're going to do in the fuse box here is we're going to use these little tabs on the top of each one of these fuses, these um, medium-sized fuses here. These are standard or ETL fuses, and this great big one here, that is a maxi fuse. I'll get a little bit more detail on that in a second. But you can see the top of these, there's a little metal contact. We can put our multimeter there and get a reading. The reading we're going to do in the fuse box is not going to be for amperage because we can use a time-saving technique to check voltage and then infer the amperage based on the voltage and the fuse type. Check the pinned comment or the description for a link to a site where you can print these out. This technique is, there's a really great video, I'll put a link up to it, um, from Humble Mechanic who outlines this technique in even greater detail than you'll see here. If you're curious, I suggest you check out his video. Basically how this works is we'll use our multimeter in voltage to see if we can find any fuse that has voltage across it, even when the vehicle is supposed to be in sleep mode. Then we can look at the type of fuse it is and move down. So let's say we've got a orange 40 amp maxi fuse. That would be like a big kahuna, like this one here. And we're pulling and we see 0.4 millivolts. We'll go over here and that will be 282 milliamps, all right? So this is nice because we don't have to jump in series on every single fuse. We don't have to pull any fuses. We can just look for uh, look for voltage across the top of them just by pressing up against those little tiny tabs there. If you can print out all of the charts that they have on the site, but for the ML, you're only going to need this one for the maxi fuse, which is this big one here, or you might find standard fuse ATO, which is that one there. This chart, the mini fuse, you'll see those on a lot of vehicles. I don't think you'll find any on the ML though. This is all we're doing here. So just make sure that you've got the right chart for the particular fuse. And again, I think we're only gonna see these two on the ML. So again, just for one more example, let's say we find some voltage across this little 15 amp blue ATO standard fuse. And let's say we find half a millivolt right there, 0.5. We're going to go across here until we get to the column for the blue 15 amp, and we can see that number there is 104 milliamps. So these charts are great. They're going to save a lot of time. We're going to make a change to our meter here. We're going to move this red lead from that amperage down here to here. You see the voltage? Push that in there. We'll turn our dial selector to whatever your lowest DC voltage setting is. On this one, it's 200 millivolts. So we'll make sure we're there and there. Then what we're going to be doing in the fuse box is on those little tiny contacts on the top of each fuse. We're just going to be pressing in just like that and looking for any voltage here. Now again, we're checking voltage, not current. We'd have to be in series to get current, but we can get voltage in parallel and that's nothing, we'll call that no voltage. But if we find one that's getting voltage across it, we can infer what the amperage might be depending upon the fuse type. So nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. And there we have some voltage. And I should mention, it doesn't matter which way we do this, it's just gonna, you know, you know all that's gonna do is show a negative sign if you're one way amp or not so that's some voltage there and let me take a note of this this is fuse number eight there's little numbers on the side it says eight right there this is a 25 amp fuse so we'll continue on down nothing there nothing there and i'm just going to do this whole line of fuses 
I'm just going to keep going down the whole thing on these big fuses. They also have the contacts on the top. They're even easier to get to like that. So you check all the fuses. The other fuse box that we want to check is inside on the passenger footwell. And um, make sure I would do your, your engine one first before you go in here because if you open up the door, it's going to take it out of sleep mode. And depending on your settings, it might might you might have to wait a little while before you get good readings but if we look right down here that's where the fuse box is there to open up this fuse box you can just use a coin and you just are going to turn these like that and then this oops i think i need to pull this back, back a little and this will come out like so and we have a bunch of fuses so you also want to make sure you check all of those. And the fuse metal is on the back here for those. There's a look there at some of the circuits uh, in this fuse box here. And the ones I'd really look at would be those big 35 amp fuses, F10, F11. Those are for the motors for the front seat adjustment. Now those are known issues on these MLs. Uh, they get wild and they don't go into sleep mode or they just keep... They stay on, they keep drawing current, and they drain your battery down. The one thing I'll mention with those, that F11, F10, uh, you will get a little bit of current draw if you've just opened the door. You have to let it set for a little bit because um, they go in, at least on this ML500, I don't know if it's even the same on the 350, that uh, my sister's 350, but since it's got all these memory things and stuff in that motor, it'll kind of do a little wake up. Uh, you have to wait a couple minutes for it to die down. That's them there. <laughs> it's super duper awkward in here, but I'll try this with one hand to see if I can show you what the reading is on there. Door's been open probably for about a minute. So let's see what we get here. Okay, you can see we've got point... Let me go. There. We've got point one. We've got point one millivolts on there. So to try to get it into sleep, I just turn the lights off by pressing the domes. I'm going to leave this door open and give it a few minutes and see if it'll go into sleep. Because uh, it's kind of difficult to get on here and make any measurements if you don't have the door open. Okay, this has been setting now with the door open. So hopefully we're in full-blown sleep mode here. Let's see what kind of voltage we get on these. Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right, zero. Check this one. And zero. Okay, so when you first when you first open the door, even if the car was previously in sleep mode, you'll get a little bit of voltage across those. Make sure you check it after it's been set in for like 15, 20 minutes, and then you shouldn't have anything. And also, you can see I've got the door open. Like I said, it's been open for a while, but doing this doesn't do anything and that makes sense since there's no voltage across that circuit so another thing to check so I went ahead I went ahead and turned those overhead lights on and now we'll close the door and open the door and see if anything wakes up I'm not exactly sure what the yeah it does so it just woke up so um, you want to leave the door open for a certain period of time because the only thing I've done is you just saw we didn't have any voltage across that fuse. If we check it now, we will, because you saw that this is this is awake. So just opening and closing the door will wake this thing up. But after a certain period of time, not sure the period of time, because I had to go and do something else, but it was something at least 15, 20 minutes, then you should have no voltage. I went through this whole fuse box and the one inside after we were in sleep mode, and the only fuse that's given me any trouble is this one right here, F8. That 25 amp standard size ATO size fuse. So that seems to be our trouble spot here. Now if you went through this whole fuse box and the one in the cab and you didn't see any draw then what I would do is come back over here to the alternator and do a diode test on the alternator. Check the pinned comment for some links to other videos to see how to test your alternator diodes. Here is the alternator wiring diagram. If you cannot locate your parasitic leak on any of the fuse protected circuits, then it is possible that your drain is being caused by one or more diode failures in your alternator. Since that's not the problem on this ML, the alternator will not be shown further in this video. But again, check the pinned comment for some links to other videos that might be helpful for you.
So we'll use this chart here for the standard fuse ATO since that was one of these kind of size fuses here. When I went back and checked it, it was kind of flashing between 0.6 and 0.7 uh, millivolts. So we'll just kind of see what both of those values are. All right, so we're going to be looking at those bottom two values. So we're at 0.7 and 0.6 millivolts, what we had on the meter. It was a clear 25 amp. And so that's a pretty significant draw there. That is a draw between 238 and 278 milliamps. And if you remember when we were in series at the battery, our draw was 330 milliamps. And we wanted that to be somewhere in the 50 milliamp range or below. So if we're on the high side of this, if we were closer to that 0.7 millivolts, uh, 270, call that 280. 280 plus 50 is 330. We want to be somewhere around the 50 range uh, in normal circumstances. So this, this looks like this is our culprit circuit. All right, so that was fuse 8. Fuse 8, if we can confirm it in position, plus it was labeled on the, on the box. There's a little label. Fuse 8, 25 amp. That is transfer case slash emergency system. All right, so I looked up what exactly emergency system means on here, and that is the tele-aid, the SOS button, that old antiquated analog system that Mercedes hasn't even supported since like 2007 or 2008. That, uh, that is what that is. The transfer case is the other thing on that circuit. We have not had any issues at all with the transfer case. So if, uh, if, I was seeing something like a low range, like it wasn't getting out of low range, or um, if the car was in limp mode or something, then I might be looking at the transfer case side, but uh, I'm hoping it's going to be this side of it. What I'll do next is I will pull out this fuse, this F8 fuse, I'll keep the, the uh, key out of the ignition and all, and just go back to the battery, go back in series just like we did before, and see if that brings our, our amperage draw to somewhere below. 50 milliamps and if it does then I'll say okay it's something on this circuit since the transfer case is on here and the emergency system we can't just pull this fuse out and go driving around because I'm guessing that that transfer case circuit oh I, I saw on the on the circuit diagram that the transfer case circuit has the transfer case module and the transfer case motor on it so I'm guessing that that's going to put us into lint mode if we pull that fuse out because there'll be no communication between the transfer case module and the ECU. So we're not going to do that. Uh, we'll just continue troubleshooting this circuit. So what I did is I pulled this fuse out and went back to the battery and did what, what we did before and checked it and I saw that the, that the drain was gone. So I put the fuse back in and when I put the fuse back in I went inside, opened the door and the emergency call thing was trying to make a phone call. Let's see, it takes a while. It's just calling no one. So I'm thinking at this point that it is the emergency call center thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this fuse, this fuse eight. I'm gonna go in and unplug that uh, module from under the seat. Before I go back inside and unplug that, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up again. So we're going to move up here to the amperage, the amperage connection. Go into that amperage mode, and I'm just going to set this up just to show you what I saw a minute ago when I pulled that fuse. So I'll make sure I got a good connection there. And something I forgot to mention earlier in the video, if you're worried about your connection there, uh, if you want to check it, you can move back down to the voltage side here turn over to voltage so 20 volts DC and then with the other lead I'm just gonna put it on the other side of the battery and if you can see a battery voltage there then you know that your connection there is okay if you do this and you don't see anything then your connection here isn't good so you'd want to scratch it clean it up get a better connection so we, we had do have a connection there we're gonna go back up to amperage mode so that one there go back over to amperage selection that one there and then we're just going to do this same thing that we did same thing that we did before so it's putting this on here all right to close that and then removing this oops the wrong way 
moving this terminal. That's probably good. Make sure you're pressing down on it and you'll see compared to what we had before that we get a big, big drop. Big, big, big. Look at that. Now this is this is the acceptable range. We're under 50 milliamps there with that fuse out. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and take this setup out here. Let me tighten this, make sure it's tightened. And now I'm going to go in and plug that module. The emergency call module is under the passenger seat. And this, this ML has like the safe thing that's here. Either way, uh, no matter whether you have that or not, we have to remove four fasteners. This one there, that one there, and then two in the back that are just like it to get the seat out. So you wanna put the seat in this position with the back all the way as, as far as up as it will go. Cause once we have those undone, we're just gonna tip it back. As you can see, those are external Torx bolts and that is an E14. Once you have the two in the front out, you wanna move the seat forward to be able to access the two in the back. That's the call module there. And you can see we have one, two. The one on this side has like a, bushing underneath it so you can just keep all this together and put it to the side now we'll go ahead and tip the seat back so I'll move the seat back and once it's in the all the way back position we'll just kind of lean it up and that'll give us access there we go and I'll lean it up and now we can now we can get in there that's the tele aid module here you can see these are four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in place, this big connector, which has got some fiber optic cables on it, and then this antenna. Here's how to unplug this module. On this side, there's kind of like a little tab that you push in. And when that's pushed in, you pull this metal thing up. So let's see if I can do it with one hand. Press that in, pull the metal thing up, and then it kind of rock out. And then this will pull out like that. Then this here is just an antenna. And that just pulls straight out like that. Those two, those are part of the fiber optic loop in this vehicle. You can see the connections there. So the suspect module is now disconnected. So I'm going to put this fuse back in, which for me is right here, this number eight. Then I'm going to go back and check the draw on the battery. So we're in there. Actually, what I could do now is uh, go across this with the meter. Let me do that. So back over here, we're just going to check uh, voltage across there like we were before. So we're going to move the lead from that amperage slot into the voltage spot and turn the lever until we get to the lowest DC voltage setting. And let's see. Let's see what happens. If I see voltage across here still, then I'm going to have to turn to the transfer case circuit. Let's see if I can hold this in a way that you might will be able to see it. All right, here we go. Let's see, what do we got? Well, look at that. All right, so this is our problem. We got some kind of problem inside that module. Now that it's out of the circuit, we don't have that, we don't have that uh, amperage draw. If you're having a similar problem on Fuse 8 and you do what we just did and you actually still have a pull here, then the two things on the other side of the circuit, so to speak, because it's split, so the other two things would be the transfer case module, which is under the um, center center council thing, it's a little box under there, and then of course the transfer case motor. We will focus now on this huge wiring diagram here. The rest of this video is going to be troubleshooting this tel aid circuit since that's our problem. If you've been using the video to isolate another circuit for your parasitic drain, you can use the same kind of methodology and techniques. Uh, but it won't be specific to any other circuit. The rest of this video is only going to be about this. Here is the emergency call circuit wiring diagram schematic. It's quite long. There's a lot of things going into this unit here, which is the call module. That's our fuse 8, that 25 amp fuse. This is the fuse box to AAM side. I'm really hoping it's not the AAM, so I'm just going to work this way. And what's down here that's most accessible to me is the module and the overhead switch. So I'm hypothesizing that if something's going wrong with this overhead switch, 
maybe it's telling the module to call. The module keeps calling and calling and calling. Of course, no one answers, so it's draining down the battery. Alternatively, maybe there's some type of interior fault on the module, and it thinks it's getting a signal from, say, the SRS module to that the airbags have deployed or something like that, and it's saying, call, 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 and it keeps doing that. Whatever is going wrong, I'm not going to dig a whole lot deeper than the module or the switch because it starts to get pretty complicated after that. And at that point, it starts to make sense to just take this in to the Mercedes dealer or an Indy, pay the 120 bucks, and have them set this module to not present. Um, but for now, I'm going to try to try to troubleshoot this the freeway with the switch if that doesn't work. Then I'll try to get a used module uh, since that's cheaper, but probably the better long term, uh, if you can, if you have a Mercedes dealer near you or an Indy who's got uh, MB Star Diagnostics, probably the best solution would be to go ahead and pay the money and have them set this Tel-Aid module to not present. But as far as I know, there's no way for regular shade trees to do that. In case you're wondering, hey, why don't we just unplug it and roll, that's an option too. But um, I suspect there's going to be an SRS light because this is part of that SRS logic. We'll find that out because I will unplug it and we'll run the codes on it and see. But, you know, if this is draining down your battery and the only solution you have is to unplug it, then unplug it and deal with the SRS light, I suppose. My limited understanding of how this thing worked when it was in effect is that if the airbags went off or if you press the SOS button, that would activate the emergency call module to call the emergency service people. Uh, and it's like a specific Mercedes-Benz thing and they would send a bunch of information including the VIN, they would send the last speed, the last direction, the GPS location, the uh, estimated number of occupants, I'm guessing from the seatbelt sensors, a bunch of information like that. And then um, as far as communication, it would take over the radio nav unit, either wake it up if it was off or if you were listening to the CD or whatever, turn that off and turn it into a communication mode where you could talk with the emergency people. And so they had, there's a hands-free system in here, so you don't need them. You don't have anything in your hand. There's a microphone, and then they can speak to you through the speakers. You can see the speakers up there. And it would send a bunch of information, and then they could talk to you and find you and whatnot. So there's a lot of information that goes into this call module thing. I'm just going to take a look for any obvious malfunction, like wires poking out or anything crazy like that. And I just don't see it. I wonder if I'm going to get a... SRS light. Let's see. There are no SRS lights on this vehicle. So I'm just going to let it run through and then I will. Oh, no, SRS. It just came back on. So I'm going to run the codes real quick. Let's see. There were no codes on this vehicle before. Yeah, there it is. Stored and current faulting communication with control unit, tell aid, where there is a cable fault. So that's what I was thinking was going to happen with that module disconnected. The radio does work. I was expecting the radio not to work with that fiber optic loop open, but uh, I guess it's not on that. Don't exactly know how this system works, as you can tell. I'm now looking at the SRS codes again, and obviously I can't. I can't clear that because it's a, it's a stored and current. I did check all the other modules and there's no code on any of these other ones. I thought maybe there'd be a code on, code on the uh, ABS. You can see it starts and it runs fine. It just now has an SRS code. This is a quick interruption to add some important information that I did not know at the time of this repair, but that I've learned since and which may help you troubleshooting this tele-aid circuit. It is possible on at least some of these systems that there may be another module storing the call command to the tele-aid module. To test this, you might try this. With the tele-aid module disconnected, cycle the key to the on position, then allow the system to go through the SRS check, wait a little bit, and then cycle the key back to the off position. Do this 
on and then wait and then off cycle at least three times. It is possible that this might end the call command to your tele-aid, whether it's coming from the SRS module or some other module, and that would solve your problem either temporarily or possibly permanently. To check this then, you would just go back and pull Fuse 8 out, reconnect the tele-aid module, and then see if it doesn't try to make a phone call right away. If it doesn't try to make a phone call right away, cycle the key on and off a few times. And if it still doesn't try to make a call, then take the key out of the ignition and allow the vehicle to go into sleep mode. Once you're back in sleep mode, go back to the fuse box and check for voltage across fuse 8, just as we did before. If you don't see any voltage, you might be lucky and that might be the fix. However, if you do that and you still have voltage over fuse 8, then you'll be in my same predicament like you see in the video. In that case, you'll ultimately have three options as far as I can tell. The first option is you can find a used module at the junkyard or eBay or wherever and you can use that to replace your old module. This is what you'll see me do in the video. I wasn't able to find a module in the junkyard, but I was able to find one on eBay for $30 shipped. The second option is really long term the best option, although it involves the services of a shop because you need specialized software. You find a shop or a dealer that has the MB star diagnostic software and with that they can set the module to not present. Once the module is set to not present, it's permanently removed from the computer system and so you're not going to have to worry about anything trying to call it. You may have to use a connector to close the fiber optic loop if you decide to go with this option. And finally, the last option is just to leave the tele-aid module disconnected and just to deal with the SRS light. So as I mentioned, the option I went with was option number one, and the rest of this video, you'll see that option put into effect. I want to mention what you saw earlier with this on and a little picture of the phone and SOS and when it was trying to make a call. That's actually the first time I've seen that on here. What it did was it just went on for quite a while, and then eventually it made the disconnect tone like da -na -na -na. and then it did like a siren uh, like a woo -woo 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 kind of weird siren and then it stopped and there was still voltage though even after this screen went blank there was still voltage at that fuse 8 so what I also wanted to mention was just to see if this thing was ever falling asleep I checked that fuse 8 after the vehicle had been setting nobody had opened the door or anything for over six hours and it still had that voltage on it so that's why over the course of a couple days, if it's not started, it's drawing down the battery. Just wanted to mention that, um, that just because you're not seeing this doesn't mean that that can't be your cause if you do find some voltage on uh, Fuse 8. That's the troublemaker right there, that SOS system. So I think what I'm going to try first is the free solution, which is to pull this out and unplug that. Maybe have a look at the switch mechanism inside, see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. I'll probably go ahead and leave that thing unplugged too. Hopefully that's not too bad of an angle there. What we're going to do to remove this is first remove these lenses. And on the side here, if you go in with a pry like this uh, plastic pry here, you can just kind of get in and pop it up and then move up towards this way. There's a little clasp right there. And then it just kind of pulls out on the bottom. I'll show you. Same deal on this side, just going over here and then go around to the top, oops, pop it out and pull that out and this is where the um, light bulbs are there if you have to change the light bulbs. Now this trim piece here, it just has a few uh, clasps which you'll see in a second, so I'm just going to pop it out. I just pried right there, go along, here, whoop, go along there and pry it out and there is, there is, there's the whole switch assembly for the sunroof and for the call module, which is this side and that side. So this blue one is the one for the call module. I'm going to unplug that. Here is the switch. There's a few very small Torx fasteners. These here, you have to remove the sticker to get to, get to those two because the sticker covers it. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and those are Torx sixes. And then you've got Torx tens here, here, uh, there, 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 and I think that one can stay in. So I got those five Torx tens out, and now for these little tiny Torx sixes. 
There are those eight little torque screws. And now I'm just going to hold this part and pull up on this part just to take the very top part off like that. And this we can put to the side and I'll just grab this board. So we can see those, we're going to flip this. So those switches there for the info and the little wrench for roadside assistance, that's those two here. And that there is the emergency call switch, which would be that one. The rest of this stuff, if we look at the, let me take this gel off. Oh, I'm gonna go like this. Let me take this out, because you'll see that the switches are kind of integrated, the, the little contacts for the switches anyway, are integrated into this gel thing. And I think this gel thing is just for that soft feel. I'm not sure, but those there, those black discs, Those are the contacts for the different switches. If we look at the board here, okay, that's the info and wrench side. So this would be the emergency call button side. See how tiny that, that tiny, tiny little break there. So if something fell on here and was closing this as the car drove around or whatever, um, that might be the cause there. So this would be another thing to check. Uh, but again, like what I'm gonna do is just leave this thing unplugged. Sunroof will still work. But even if you don't wanna go in here and take this thing apart, unplugging that blue connector will uh, eliminate this as a possible cause. Let's put this back together. I'll just grab the board and slip it back on here. Get around this little jelly stuff. And then I will just drop it back in place here. Goes nice and easy. This this piece here goes on. It snap, there it goes, snaps into place. And then we've got those little torques and those big bigger torques. So there it is back together. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this, but I'm only going to plug in the sunroof controls. That black one there is the sunroof control. I'm going to leave this blue one disconnected. And to put this back in place, just push this connector so it's not going to be in the way of anything. I'm just going to kind of push it back there, I guess. And then get it in the little clasps. Let's see if I can get it in the... I guess, yeah, it looks like getting it in the back work, uh, the back first works better. And then maybe these front ones next. Oh, it's got my glove. Okay, there it's in. So to get this lens back in, we got that loop and then that kind of hook. So this is going to be this side. I'll push that in the back and then just kind of bend it until it snaps in. And then this one will be this side. The loop in there. Okay, so these aren't going to be illuminated anymore since that's not plugged in. Uh, but if they were causing your, your, your problem with the module, it might be the fix for you. We got Fuse 8 back in. The overhead switch is unplugged now and the old module is still in. We'll see what we get here now. Switch on the overhead console unplugged and the old module plugged in. And we have a draw there. So that is unfortunately a strike out on just disconnecting the switch, but maybe that will work for you. I will now wait for that replacement module to come in and hopefully that'll be the solution. If not, then it's gonna have to be uh, going and having the uh, module set to not present. The new module came today, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this Fuse 8 out and swap in that new module, new use module. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate, make sure you pull this fuse out before you disconnect that tele-aid or any of the other modules, like if you're doing one other circuit and you have to disconnect some kind of module, make sure you, un you remove the fuse first, then unplug the module. Pull this fuse, fuse 8, pull it out before you unplug that module. I'm going to remove these four 10 millimeter bolts. Pull those out, this just comes right out. Here's the original module. Here's the one that I got on eBay. And this was like 30 bucks. I compared 
both this model number up here and this second number. Um, ending in 709 because I saw a couple that had this same number up here but a different number here. So that's just what I went. This is uh, some type of sticker and these marks are some type of marks from the salvage dealer. But that's what that looks like there. There's the replacement module in place, and to get this back on, you're going to align these. There's one on each side with that right there and that right there. So let's see if I can do it with one hand. Okay, and once it's in, then you're going to push. Oh, I got it all the way. There you go. Push this down until it snaps. See how it snapped on that little deal there? And it feels good, and I'll go ahead and plug this antenna in like that. We got Fuse 8 back in. We got the telemodule connected, the switch, the overhead switch disconnected. I put the key to the on position, turned it off, and it's been about a minute. And let's see what we get here. Nothing. Hooray. And with that new module in, I'll go ahead and cycle the key and just see what happens with our SRS light there. Let's see if we'll get off. And it is not coming back on. All right. I'm back in here with the reader to check SRS codes. Okay, that is a stored code now. Cool. That's why it's not showing. So I can go ahead and erase that. Yes. Oops. Erase codes. Yes. Reset the key. That. Okay, I'm back in here. And no codes. No codes on that SRS. Alright. Now just note when you rock the seat down that you gotta have this part aligned through this hole here. And your track might have moved around a little like this one did. So just pull it down and get it get it in place and then stick those fasteners in. I would stick each one, uh, or stick all four in uh, just a little bit because you might have to move it some uh, before you get it exactly where it needs to be. Remember that you'll have to move the seat up to get these back ones. And this is the configuration of the, it's a real long bolt. That's the one that goes on this side. Just be sure to get those all tacked down nice and tight. Hopefully that's a good look there. So I've got this, this on here. I'm going to go ahead and keep this closed, see what kind of uh, chrono draw we have now. The ML is in sleep mode, it's been sitting here for about 20 minutes, so it should only be a very minimal draw. Here we go. So I'll lift this post up now. There it is. Alright, and you can see there, we're down at 30, which is exactly where we want to be. So this is the fix for this ML. I'm just going to make sure this is nice and tight. Good. And we're set. I hope this video was helpful for you in diagnosing your parasitic draw on the ML. Uh, even if you were able to locate another different circuit and maybe troubleshoot it instead of the tele-aid. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repairs.